Blue smoke. This video is composed of three parts. Part one is the chemistry and formulas to make these igniters from raw ingredients. Part two is how to make the ignition cups that form the foundation for all these igniters. These are also the instructions for the pre-made kits sold at inventionincarnate.com. Part three consists of a few examples of how to integrate these igniters into legal devices. Feel free to jump around as you see fit. The pull string ignition system that I've made so many videos about from raw materials. The ingredients the are all going to be there and the formula and how to do it. You are welcome to make your own. I encourage that. However, I wanted to make these kits accessible, more accessible to the people who don't feel like doing chemistry all day. Also, the supplier that I linked to um, runs out too quick. Well, they ran out, and they've been out since day two of that video release. So here's another way for you to obtain that. It's also I sell it for $20 cheaper. All right, so let's get started. First, well, first of all, the ingredients we're looking at are sulfur powder, magnesium carbonate, potassium chlorate, antimony trisulfide. This is really pretty, by the way. It's like glitter. <laughs> and then red phosphorus. So let's go over the percent compositions, right? So first of all, when you get that kit, the I separate the oxidizer from the rest of the components because it is illegal to mail. It would It's considered a hazmat uh, for mailing. Shout out to Dude in Walmart who left a comment on one of my videos. Um, describing the H, I think it's H48, uh, primer composition. So, so he, he gave me that composition and the ratios and I kind of went from there. I tweaked it a little bit to suit our needs. Obviously there's no red phosphorus in gun primers, but well, not obviously, it's not obvious at all, but, um, yeah, so I tweaked some of the stuff a little bit, but we are going to start with the the oxidizer potassium chlorate and our our desired yield is approximately 14 grams of ignition composition which is what we're making now the desired yield of the striker composition which we're going to do after this is about 3 grams so I'm going to, you know what we need to do though, is to grind this up. Oh, would you look at that? I got a cute little coffee grinder right here. So maybe this little magical. Oops, I went over. Okay, well. All right, so that's the potassium chlorate. Now we're going to add 24.6% of antimony trisulfide, which for our desired yield of 14 grams is going to be 3.4 tear. 3.4 grams. Now listen, you're not supposed to technically add into a mixed, this, this is poor chemistry practice. Okay, empty, empty container, tear, 3.4, it's a lot more dense, obviously. It's such a pretty chemical. It's like glistening, glittery. This is Chinese needle. I don't think I need to use Chinese needle. 
um, and you don't either, but this is what I had. 3.4. Okay. Add a little more because some's gonna, some is gonna be lost in the transfer. Oh, what do we have? Sulfur, 9%. So we're gonna do 1.26 grams of sulfur. This is sulfur. Cap this sulfur. Take our little mixture here. Tear. Isn't this pocket scale sketchy? <laughs> so we are adding, again, sorry, 1.26 grams of sulfur. Open this, tear it. Yeah, close enough for government work. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're adding 10.2% ground glass. This is my ground glass. I literally pulled this from the trash at my friend's house. It's a, It was a storm window that broke, and then I crushed it with a mortar and pestle. And... Yeah, don't recommend doing that. It's uh, quite a pain in the ass. Now, this is tinted orange, reddish orange, from some trace iron oxide I had lying around. Um, so, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, it's kind of a negligible amount that's in here, even though the, the dying power of iron oxide is extremely strong. Um, but it is an oxidizer technically, so I, you know, I'm going to have to make a new batch, but I'm going to use a ball mill with some like, I don't know, granite or something. Okay. So in this mixture, we have 1.43, um, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to go direct 1.43 grams. The ground glass add is a uh, friction creating agent. So the antimony trisulfide burns hot and bright. It burns like bright white. Um, oh, the magnesium carbonate. Oh my God, all right. All right, so the magnesium carbonate, when it'll slow down that, this reaction. Um, this is only a trace amount. We are talking about 0.1 grams. Um, but what happens is, is when it decomposes during the combustion, it releases CO2. And the CO2 cools and slows down the whole reaction. Um, that would, you know, the ignition temperature, theoretically, is going to be hot enough. Uh, do I need to grind this? Yeah, probably. Uh, the ignition temperature is still hot enough to ignite a fuse, but it gives us, it, it extends the duration of that ignition, you know, by a few milliseconds, but like that, those extra, that extra duration will give a uh, fuse or whatever it is that we're lighting more time to ignite. Uh, it increases the probability of ignition. So even though it like is slowing down a reaction, it's actually, you know what? If I'm adding a trace amount of magnesium carbonate, I'm going to get a trace amount of extra oxidizer in lieu. Okay, so I'm just going to measure this out and sprinkle it like fairy dust. Magnesium carbonate is super fluffy. This is a gymnast chalk or rock climbing chalk. But it's used to, yes, yeah, suck up 
suck up moisture from your hands. All right, so that's 0 0.1. I'm going to add a little bit more of the bond. Uh, 0 0.12. All right. I'll add glue to this and the striker composition at the same time. Anyway, so that is mixed ignition comp. Now we are going to make the striker composition. The desired mass that we're looking for is three grams total, and we're just going to do 30% each component into this striker composition, which is what goes on tear, the string or the wire. So we're going to do one gram of sulfur. Ah, that's pretty good. We're going to do, this is the red phosphorus. I'm going to get a clean. Oh man, this stuff. This stuff is really pretty also. It smells like butt. So one gram of sulfur, one gram of red phosphorus, and then one gram. Oh, I didn't add the. I didn't add the ground glass, did I? Yeah, I did. All right, to the other one, and then one gram of ground glass. Thank you, Austin in South Carolina, to being the first to purchase one of these. Um, also, side note: uh, on my website, I'm selling them via. Venmo and I'm doing that to avoid the absurd costs to add a store to your online to your website right so I bought the domain uh, inventionincarnate.com I made a website and then in order to add a storefront a store to it cost like 250 bucks and then 6% of each transaction of each credit card or Apple Pay transaction goes to the well, I'll, 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 you can make it on your own but I still love you, and any any profit goes uh, to the channel. The people who do make these purchases, can you please leave a comment on this video um, that you've received your product? That would be awesome, because that'll at least give me some credibility. I'm this is part two of this very long video. Hopefully it's not that long. But these are the instructions, essentially, for the invention incarnate pull string ignition kit pull string pull pin pull ring whatever you want you can modify it what uh the objective of this kit is to basically allow someone to use a friction device to ignite a fuse of some sort or um a flare or a stormproof match to ignite a smoke composition um but basically what it the objective is is to essentially create these ignition cups and then the ability to pull the string or whatever you want through these cups and uh, initiate a hot enough reaction uh, to ignite a fuse of some sort. So this is the ignition composition, the powder, the final powder. When you get the kit, there will be a bag of potassium chlorate, the oxidizer, and you'll have to combine it inside of a container with all the other components. Because I cannot ship, uh, we don't want to mix the oxidizers and the fuel or else it's a hazardous shipping. So um, we're trying to avoid hazmat shipping. Uh, inside of this igni igniter composition is potassium chlorate, antimony trisulfide, sulfur, magnesium carbonate, and ground glass. This is the striker composition. And that is ground glass, sulfur, and red phosphorus. So I'm going to show you what to do with them and how to make yourself some ignition cups. The ignition cups form the foundation for all of these pull pin devices. So smoke grenades, um, flares, um, yeah, whatever. I can, I'm going to make a video soon on time delay fuses. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a safe way to do that one. Uh, so let's just get started. This ignition mix, now that you've combined the potassium chlorate, the white powder in the bag, which looks <laughs> pretty sketchy considering, um, and that uh, the, the mix that comes inside of this, the ign it'll be labeled ignition comp. Um, this is just a mixing container. It is, this is too narrow to mix in. Uh, that's not going to be pretty. 
I'm still so the kits will vary. Um, I was gonna throw in a few of these tubes, a few of these polyethylene tubes. I'll show you how to use these ones later. These are cool. Um, uh, what else was I gonna throw in? Yeah, basically the uh, some the 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 braided rat tail that you need. Into that later. This is the ignition powder. So we pour it into there, and essentially what we're doing is we're just mix, mixing it to a pancake batter consistency with PVA glue. I'm using clear glue here. Any PVA glue will work, whether it's this Elmer's clear glue, uh, white school glue, wood glue will work, and I don't know if I'd venture outside of that. But So we basically just mix this into a pancake batter. Well, maybe a little thicker than a pancake batter. You might want to save a little bit. So instead of pouring out all of this into the mixing container, save a little bit of powder in the event that you over add the glue. If you add too much glue and it becomes too, uh, like, uh, viscous, or not viscous, uh, the opposite of viscous, if you screw it up, you'll still have some powder to thicken it back up. So that was my bad. Uh, this is pretty good. This is this is not pancake batter, it's a little thicker. And I'm gonna actually show you a few ways to make these, a couple of ways to make these cups. Um, and what we'll do is we'll get started on loading this into one of these syringes. No, I do not want to use this one. I want to use this other stick, the round dowel. Because it comes off easier. If you bank this, this, this stuff on the side of the bottle, or on the side of the, the syringe, um, look at that theuk stuff. Uh, it, it, you got to leave an air chamber so that when you put the plunger on it will purge the air so like this in other words so it'll purge the air down it won't well that's getting trapped a little bit yeah well that's pretty good um, it'll purge all this air out if you bank it on the side if you make it circumferential then it'll create an, a seal that you won't be able to purge and you'll just have an air bubble it's not a big deal but this is, and also you may need to cut the nose of this proboscis or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to try and include these in those kits. Uh, availability is kind of limited to what I can buy at Hobby Lobby. And also depends on how many people order them. Let's see. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to fill up a few cups without a string. Also, the cups are definitely going to vary as well because the ones I ordered are totally different. All right, this is too thin of a hole. But whatever. Um, I wonder if it's better to not use a syringe and to just scoop it in. All right, so this one is a little bit more full. Let me see if I can focus. Yeah, this one's a little more full than is ideal. But you'll see we don't have the string inside of this. What we're going to do is use a, a wire. This is just an example. One, I'll do one of those. I'll do another one of them. And then we'll just say that's that for that. And now, oh, I will definitely include a needle, an upholster needle, because those are a pain in the ass to get. And those are, you know, a lot of these, the, these items are easy to get, like the tubing or whatever. But um, the, uh, I'll tell you right now, those upholstery needles are a separate trip, usually, for men, I'll say. All right, here's an upholstery needle. And this is, oh yeah, I'll pull out a... Pull out like that. Watch. 
Uh, the string thicknesses also will vary depending on what's available to me. So these holes get a little dilated when they go through the doubled up section here. Um, all you need to do is allow, you know, six to ten inches on, on of tail here, separate them, and then we just tuck these in a bit to hold them in place. And this one... Tuck that in. And then tuck this in. We're going to basically eventually cut these to leave uh, three quarters to a half inch on the bottom below this cup when that time comes. So first we are going to halfway fill these cups up. So yeah, fill these cups up with this ignition composition, uh, which is in this wrench. You can also use a stick if you want, or I'm gonna. Uh, some of the kits might have paint brushes. Um, uh, those will help to not completely fill the cup. We do not want to fill this cup completely with this pull string because it will basically be. It'll just a, kind of become like a firecracker. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna go back to the syringe because it's easier. And that's too full, but it's okay. All right, let's let these dry and then add the striker compound. All right, so we're gonna pretend these are dry. These these ones are not uh, for the sake of my video, but I will, as long as they're tacky enough or the ignition mix is thick enough that it'll hold the, the cups in place, you're, you're gonna be okay. But you do have to let it thoroughly dry if you're hang drying it or whatever, uh, you want to let that dry out for like two days, probably. If you run it on top of a dehumidifier like I do, uh, it'll be ready within a day for sure. So, all right, I'm kind of jumping the gun with those, but whatever. We're going to do the striker mix now. This is 30%, 33% of each of these components sulfur, ground glass, and red phosphorus. Dump that in there and basically make a very a slightly thinner consistency than the previous than that igniter mix. We're just going to add some glue. Mix it up with a little mixer. Hmm. Smells like fats. Slightly thinner consistency than the than pancake batter. Oh, I'm sorry. I would say a similar consistency to pancake batter. The other composition, or the other mix, was just slightly thicker than pancake batter. But this is about, this is about good. What is this like? I don't know what it's like. Um, and I prefer, you can dip the ends of these igniters. You can dip them into this mix. Um, but I think that, ah, uh, yeah, that's good. Just rolling it on like this is great. Oh, geez. Let me get in the view. That is perfect. Just like that. Um, if you accidentally mix this mix too thin, 
then you might just have to double dip it. That's all. It's not the end of the world. Double dip as in dip it once, let it dry, dip it again. Or let it at least tack. That's a good one too. And then this is a good one also. So for those other two cups we just made without the string, I'm going to be using a wire. Okay, I will not be including this wire in these kits because I believe the performance is somewhat unreliable. Um, I do not like using the wire. However, most commercial smoke devices do use a wire and pellet system. Um, I am going to remove the red phosphorus from the table, remove the sulfur from the table, and remove, well, antimony trisulfide is not really. Yeah, all right, so whatever, I'll move this too for funsies. And so first, uh, I don't know, whatever wire you get, I think that mm, maybe 22 gauge, 20 gauge-ish wire is better. This is 24, it's a little thin. Um, you want to just heat the wire end that you will be coiling to burn off that weird shiny coating. Uh, galvanized wire works too. Uh, this is beading wire, which is just like... Oh, and then the next thing you want to do is to abrade it with some sandpaper. And you want the striations from the abrasion to go sideways. So I... You want it to go perpendicular to the direction of pull. So we're going to go sideways, and this is a good way to do that. This is uh, um, the copper sandpaper, the copper pipe sandpaper for that plumbers use after they uh, before and after they solder uh, pipe fittings. All right, so this is abraded. Now. We, what we do is we wrap this around into a coil, tightly wound coil, around this dowel. And all right, so there we have that. Let me get this focused. Yeah, so um, I'm going to just dip this in the red phosphorus striker composition for fun because that will add some insurance that it will ignite. Now, uh, I would assume that, oof, this is going to basically shoot off a, a burning ball of phosphorus. Um, uh, so maybe it's not such a great idea. Uh, maybe uh, Let me take some of this out. What we want to do is, um, so the red phosphorus in the in these mixes, uh, when it when it when it comes uh, when it's heated or under when it experiences friction and, and subsequent heat, uh, it converts very readily to white phosphorus, which then reacts um, to oxygen in the air and to other oxidizers uh, nearby, and it. It will ignite the antimony trisulfide potassium chlorate composition. Um, all right, so this is we'll we'll try this. We'll try this coiled style. And then what we do is we take one of those dried cups um, that we filled and just sink it down into this neoprene. We do not want to like penetrate through this too far to dilate it because we want there to be enough friction to yeah there we go so just let me see that the head of that needle and with a wire that is I'm gonna cut this wire So wire is a little better than bright orange or yellow or blue colored string if you're making something tactical looking. Um, but I'll say if you shrink wrap, what I like to do is shrink wrap this 
the this rat tail wire or I'm sorry string I like to shrink wrap it with just black electrical shrink wrap and um, because that makes it more durable against abrasion also and then I'd crimp a uh, an electrical conduit lock nut onto it a half inch electrical conduit lock nut anyway you'll see that at the end of this video and so yeah there we go so we want to let this dry um, it'll just sit right in there and then like that but that's one alternate way to do it other than the string um, yeah well, let's let that dry welcome to my I spy book of a desk so uh, what I'm gonna do now is go through this is the fun stuff I'm gonna go through some examples of how to mod or how to utilize these pull string igniters on certain you know different devices this is a 3 8 inch inner diameter polyethylene tube um, what I've done is I'm cross puncturing it to accommodate a fuse that's going across that is for this where is this thing this is a commercial device but I'm gonna show you just for example purposes how to uh, utilize this system here so we have an ignition cup here it's all dried I'm gonna just feed it through this you can also use a quarter inch diameter polyethylene tube um, but you want to uh, I'll push this in with a stick it's a little more blunt um, you can use a quarter inch if you can fit the cup in it uh, you can also flare the cup by heating a set of needle nose pliers and then just flaring open the opening fl uh, flaring this guy by basically going like this heating this up and then twisting like this and opening it um, just as it cools be sure to hold it in place because polyethylene once it cools it'll shrink back to its original position somewhat and all right so now i'm going to take this little staple clear this out of the way and obviously do this uh come on uh here's a trick if you don't know it everybody knows this but removing the safety proof that stupid child lock on a bick That's a good trick, uh, both for ease of ignition and also in a survival situation when your butane runs out, you can use the flint and steel on a BIC with the safety lock removed. You can use that to ignite a fire. All you have to do is slowly pull the flint and steel like this into a little, oh, I'm not I'm way over there, into a little pile into some really like fluffy tinder. You dump it out, and then when you ignite it, it well, you get the idea. Anyway, um, I digress. So let's heat this up with this pair of needle nose pliers. This is just a, st a narrow crown staple that I had lying around. You can also use two little nails or pins or whatever you want. Um, we're just, you know, going across this to hold this cup in when it's pulled. Oh, sorry. That should come through. All right. And so now we can pull this through and let this end sit. Flare these a little bit. And then cut them with some end snips. All right, so now there's that piece there, right? And now let's take this guy. This is barely big enough to fit. And we can, I'm going to dilate this polyethylene or this uh, hole again. Jeez. And make sure not to hit that cross. That little guy going across there. There's probably a better procedure for doing this. I'm just kind of rushing through these examples. Um, Alright, so there's... What am I doing? 
Oh, this fuse can be fed through here. All right. And let's just go this way, just for some redundancy. And now we can find a, well, we can just punch a new hole on the side here with these there that's all the way through now I'm gonna feed this string outside of this cardboard and we're gonna line it up just like that okay and then we can put all right we're just gonna cover this up with some of this foil tape I don't want to do that again Now let's make this look a little more tactical. <laughs> Blue smoke. No, no, let it go, let it go. That's actually really good, let it go. Dude, that's sick. Oh, look at that volume, man. All right, so now this is a smoke canister. Um, I have a video on how to make this composition. Um, what we're going to do is just dump some plaster in here. Okay, so now there's a layer of plaster of Paris. And these are quarter inch Delrin rods. And this is um, a, an ignition system for tactical smoke grenades. That's a video I made also. You can see that on how this is made exactly. But there's a one of these ignition cups right here. And then it goes into a storm proof match, which is sealed up with nitrocellulose lacquer. What we're gonna do is just puncture that through the center of the plaster going into the ignition comp or the smoke comp composition and the plaster when it cures holds that in place right so that's oops I should have ah, all right I guess we don't need a lid for this um, and now the these are quarter inch Delrin rods which are basically um, baffle holes for the smoke to come out of Uh, the Delrin does not stick to plaster when the plaster cures. We can very easily pull it right out, which is su super cool. And I forgot the name of the guy who made that suggestion in one of the comments, but props to you. All right, so moving on. Next is a thermite canister. Which we are not going to do. Whoa! Whoa! Well, first I'll pull the Delrin rods out. Great. All right in a bit I think I need more magnesium uh, carbonate 